Welcome back guys. So today I want to talk about a 1981 slasher called Nightmare that I just watched for the first time on Amazon Prime. Um, I'm really liking the fact that Amazon Prime and Shudder have so many slashers, so there are a lot of 80s slashers that I really want to see. I really am interested in this history of 80s slashers, because there's a lot I've seen, but there's a lot, I mean, and a lot that I have not seen, because in the 80s, slashers were prevalent to the point where, like, they would make, like, five every couple weeks, like, would be released, of, I'm assuming. Like, it would be that much, like, in a month, there'd probably be, like, at least five or ten horror movies, or five or ten slasher movies, cre uh, like, released in theaters, because... After Friday the 13th came out, this slasher craze became insane and invincible for a long time. Um, so I'm excited that Amazon Prime has a lot of these ones that I could have not found another way to watch. So I decided upon watching Nightmare from 1981 about this mental patient who breaks out or who escapes from this mental hospital and goes out and kills. Um, who has a backstory on his family, and I'm gonna keep the spoiler free except for the backstory, which is a trope that's in almost all of these movies where, like, the killer, he, like, is, he's a killer because he watches parents have sex, like, his father and another woman have sex. So, that's why. That's why he's a killer. That's why he's a mental patient. That's why he's going completely insane. But I like that. I like that it, it's just a cliche, but it's fun in this one. I guess fun like it usually is in these slashers. Um, of course he goes crazy after seeing that. Um, and, he, and he gets like, kind of sexually aroused whenever he kills somebody. And you see that throughout this movie, and it's insane. Um, now the opening in this I thought was pretty cool, and I thought it was effective for the most part, but after that it just became pretty boring. Like, it... The kills in this, for the most part, and by the mo for the most part, I mean for the most part, they're okay, they're serviceable. Um, but for me, this the biggest problem I have with this one is that there's too many fake out scare jump scares in this movie, and I know horror movies do that universally all the time, but man, this one in particular, there were like five times I counted where I'm just like. Quit doing these fake outs, and they're so dumb. Like, it's 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 almost to me like this movie didn't have much of a budget, and they churned it out so quickly because it was in the '80s in 1981, right after Friday the 13th came out, and they were everyone was trying their hardest to churn out slashers, and it just felt like a lot of those purposeful jump scares in it that are fake outs were there on purpose just because they didn't have a budget. <laughs> Um, for a lot more kills, um, or just to pad the time, which wasn't like a huge problem, but I was just like, oh, okay, that's just, I could see why that's adding, why they're doing that, they're adding runtime for this hour and a half movie, but I don't know, like, like to me, the kills, like, there's only one kill in this movie where I was sitting there like, holy fuck, that was awesome, every other one of the kills are just okay, um, they just didn't, they didn't do it much for me in this one. Um, and the acting in this is pretty serviceable, but it's just, again, it's just playing by numbers with this, with this type of movie, where it's like this, this version of, this movie in particular, it's like, that just didn't care for any of the characters. They were pretty boring and pretty uninteresting. Um, and the killer was creepy, but he was he was in it an okay amount of time, but not all the time. And and honestly, watching it without him in some scenes made it feel like this movie was originally trying to be where you didn't know who the killer was. Like, you didn't see who the killer was, because he's always hiding. But it just feels like that, because he's not in it as much as I thought he would be. But I do like how it's, a, it's for the most part, a maskless killer, up until the end, where it's a killer wearing a mask, but besides that it wasn't. So, again, it does a weird thing where it's like, oh, we gotta have a mask at the end, because that's what most slashers had right this time. Um, which is fine, but it's just like, they could have done that the whole movie. Why'd you have to have him in a mask at the very last minute of the movie? Um, he just wears a mask at the end of the movie just because, because it's a slasher. Um, and the ending, honestly, though, I'm gonna give this credit. The ending was really cool and really entertaining. It just felt like the first 
like literally the last like 15 minutes were awesome but then the rest of the movie was just by numbers kind of boring like there wasn't anything that stood out the kills up to the end were not incredibly memorable they were just okay the acting is just all right and serviceable there's just not much that made me like the most of the movie besides the ending but the ending is awesome that was an ending fight i like the fact that this came out before Friday the 13th, the final chapter, but this fight is cool because it's a fight with a little kid, younger than Tommy Jarvis, versus the killer. I think that's cool. I thought that was actually unique and fun. Um, I really did enjoy that a lot. And it did have a complete different change of pace whenever we got to that ending fight between the kid and the killer. Um, now, there is a scene at, like, at the very end of the movie where it kind of goes full circle with this kill that's been elaborated on throughout the movie. And this kill at the end of the movie is awesome. It's really incredible. And it's it felt like this was they used all their budget on this one kill because it was so great. I really loved the kill at the end of the movie. And I loved how it resolved this character and his story. So... I really, really enjoyed the ending, but the rest of the movie is just a drag. There's not anything that really made me be very interested in this one. And there's a lot of a lot of slashers that I can watch and just be entertained, but this one wasn't super entertaining. It was just kind of played straight. There wasn't there wasn't that much like humor in it. It wasn't unintentionally funny, like something like Sleepaway Camp. It wasn't it wasn't that same type of humor. It didn't have really any humor in it, and it was just kind of bland because say what you will about horror movies with really bad acting but I feel like if they have that that can make it way more watchable way more entertaining this one the acting is alright these characters are just kind of boring the movie is just kind of boring until the end which the end is awesome so so yeah really weird mixed bag on this but I really love the ending I just thought the rest of the movie was just not very memorable so so yeah it but to be fair, a lot of these horror movies do that, where like the climax is great, and the rest of it you could say is just kind of okay. But I think that this is just a case where I didn't care much for it until the end. So the ending gives a point. I give points to the ending, but just the rest of the movie was just really hit or miss. Like there was nothing that was memorable about it besides the ending. So I overall, this was just a weird one. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It was just kind of middle of the road for reasons I explained already. So... That's what I think about 1981's Nightmare. If anybody has seen this, tell me down below what you think of it, and thank you guys so much for watching.